Hello kids, this is Mr. Whistler with your video lesson of the day and today we will be talking about political parties. The first political parties to be exact and uh, they were the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. They like to call themselves the Republicans but they are actually the Democratic Party of today. Our first word is political party and it is a political group or faction. People with the same political ideas. Factions form to organize support for their political views. First party is a Federalist. They were headed by Alexander Hamilton. Uh, the official, the faction that believed in a strong federal government, the faction that believed in a weak state government. These two kind of go together. If you believe in a strong federal government, you believe in a weak state government. Now, it's kind of weird that Alexander Hamilton is the head of the party because George Washington was the first president. George Washington spoke against political parties. He said he didn't belong to one, but he ruled as though he was a federalist. He, he took ideas from Alexander Hamilton and almost listened to him quite a bit. The significance is they uh, favored rule by the wealthy, manufacturing, they had a loose interpretation of the Constitution, they favored Britain, the National Bank, and tariffs. The Democratic Republicans, or the Democrats of today, were headed by Thomas Jefferson. Uh, they were the faction that believed in a weak federal government and a strong state government. And they favored rule by the wealthy, agriculture, strict interpretation of the Constitution. They wanted to be friends with France more than Britain. They favored state banks and free trade. Partisan, favoring one side of an issue. These guys think Federalist and these guys think Democratic. Staying loyal to your party. When the parties do this, it makes it really hard to get things done because uh, Republicans will not vote for Democratic bills and Democrats won't vote for Republican bills. So they, when they're practicing partisan politics, they stay loyal to their party and it's hard to get things done. Implied powers. Powers that were not expressly forbidden in the Constitution. Like the Elastic Clause. We can make any laws necessary to be able to do our job. Here's a good way to put the Elastic Clause. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18. It's also called the Necessary and Proper Clause. Gives Congress the authority to pass all laws needed to carry out the enumerated powers, 1 through 17, in the Constitution. Helps make the central government more powerful. This is a pretty powerful uh, power that they have in the Constitution. Caucus. Official, a meeting held by a political party to choose their candidate. Political meeting. Helps to gather support for a political party. All right, in September of 1796, Washington announced that he would not run for a third term as president. The 64-year-old Washington was ailing and ready to retire. Um, president is a hard job and it puts a lot of stress on the people that serve in that office and he was just ready to go. He was troubled over a few things, specifically uh, the divisions that had developed in American politics, political parties. He thought political parties were very dangerous to the country, and in his farewell address he attacked the evils of political parties and making alliances with other countries. So here's a uh, part of his farewell address, and when I teach this in class, I have the students read it, 
and then I will read it, and then I have you guys get together in groups or shoulder partners and try to figure out these questions. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this. It's written in that 1700s language, and there's a lot of vocabulary in here that's kind of hard to figure out. So uh, you might have to look this up. You might have to look some things up in here. When I read it, I had to read it three or four times before I could figure it out. I had to look up a few words myself. So, this spirit of party conflict, unfortunately, is inseparable from our nature, having its root in the strongest passions of the human mind. It exists under different shapes in all governments, more or less stifled, controlled, or repressed. But in those of the popular form, it is seen in its greatest rankness and is truly their worst enemy. The alternate domination of one faction over another sharpened by the spirit of revenge natural to party dissension which in different ages and countries has perpetuated the most horrid enormities is itself a frightful despotism. the disorders and miseries which result gradually incline the minds of men to seek and repose in the absolute power of an individual and sooner or later the chief of some prevailing faction turns this disposition to the purposes of his own elevation on the ruins of public liberty. And again, this is Washington, a piece of Washington's farewell address in September 1796. So the first question, in the passage above, George Washington believes that those who rely on political parties will also come to rely on what? Well, you see here, they don't have the, re they don't have the word rely in the text. So you have to have find words that mean rely. So first of all, let's take this first sentence in the second paragraph. The alternate domination. Well, what's domination? Domination is having power or being better than something of one faction over another. Well, a faction we learned in vocab is basically a political party. Faction's a group. They used this word for political party back then quite a bit. So, let's just take this part. The alternate domination of one faction over another. Change faction to political party. The alternate domination of one political party over another. Use today's Republicans and Democrats as an example. When Obama, a Democrat, first took office, uh, the Democrats held control of the House, they had control of the Senate, and they had control of the White House. So, they could make any law they wanted, <clears throat> and the Republicans couldn't stop it because they didn't have enough votes. So one of the things that they passed was Obamacare, and the Republicans are very much against Obamacare. So they were dominating the first two years of Obama's. They were dominating the Republicans. And <clears throat> let's look at the second part. The alternate domination of one faction over another sharpened by the spirit of revenge natural to party dissension which in different ages and countries has perpetuated the most hoarded enormities in itself frightful despotism. So sharpened by the spirit of revenge. So <clears throat> after two years they had the midterm elections and the Republicans took control of the House or the Senate. So now the Democrats aren't quite dominating, but they're still dominating because they have control of two. Well, after these last elections, the Republicans took control of the other House. So now they have control of the House and the Senate. The Democrats still have control of the White House because Obama's still in office. So now it's not so easy for the Democrats to pass anything because since the Republicans have more votes in each House, they can block it. So now the Republicans are dominating. That's where the alternate comes in. The alternate domination of one political party over another sharpened by the spirit of revenge. Well their revenge for Obamacare is not to pass anything else until Obama gets out of office. Now when they think this way they can't get anything done. So, let's go down here. The disorders and miseries which result gradually incline the minds of men 
to seek security and repose in the absolute power of an individual. So George Washington believes that those who rely on political parties will also become to rely on what? Absolute power of an individual. Or, and sooner or later, the chief of some prevailing faction. Or the head, the chief of some prevailing means winning or dominating faction political party. So men will come to rely on the absolute power of an individual or sooner or later the chief of some political party who would turn this disposition to the purposes of his own elevation on the ruins of public liberty. Washington believes that the absolute power of one person will come at the expense of what? Public liberty. So the third question, and there's not really any evidence of this question other than the way the words are used in here, but if you ask yourself, what is the whole purpose, what's the main idea of these two paragraphs, the answer would be, Washington thinks political parties are bad. Washington chose to use the words, unfortunately, stifled, controlled, repressed, enemy, domination, dissension, horrid, deputism, and frightful in his address. What's the purpose of these words? Well, they're all negative words, and he's talking about political parties, so one can only conclude that political parties are bad. So, um, that's Washington's quote, and that's kind of how I see it. Washington showed such words to drive home the point of the dangers of political factions. All right, opposing views. Washington denounced political parties. They will divide the nation. Many people feared political parties would threaten national unity. And if you think about that, I think these guys are right. Uh, 200 and some odd years later, uh, the Republicans and Democrats a lot of times can't work together. Uh, if you talk to normal people about political stuff, they argue. They're divided about things. I'm not sure if, if that could have been stopped, though. It seems like a natural thing for people with the same beliefs to band together. Others thought it natural that people who had similar beliefs would band together. Jefferson and Hamilton, Jefferson and Hamilton, took opposing sides on many issues. The Constitution does not say you can create a bank. It doesn't say I can't. This is a strict interpretation of the Constitution, and this is a loose one. Even though Washington warned against political parties, he was pretty partisan, which he favored one side of an issue. He usually supported Hamilton's position. I agree with Hamilton. So in 1793, Jefferson was so unhappy that he resigned as Secretary of State. You always take Hamilton's side, I quit. A couple years later, Hamilton resigned as well as Secretary of the Treasury. If you quit, I quit. So in 1796, political parties began to form. Political parties developed from differences on many issues. Federalists were supporters of the Washington administration and Hamilton. And they believed in a strong central government and a loose interpretation of the Constitution. It doesn't say I can't. I agree with you, Hamilton. Federalists favored Britain, National Bank, tariffs, and manufacturing. Britain... National Bank, Tariffs and Manufacturing, though they thought the federal government had powers not forbidden in the Constitution. Congress could create any law that would help them carry out their responsibilities. And that again, my friends, is the Elastic Clause. Federalists supported rule by the wealthy. They did not trust the common man to rule. 
And their strongest support was in the northeast. So if you look at this map of the 13 states up here in the northeast, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and those states was where most of the Federalists lived. The Democratic Republicans, or the Republicans as they like to call themselves, are today's Democrats and supported Jefferson and Madison. Democrats believed in a weak federal government, strong state government, a strict interpretation of the Constitution. If it doesn't say it in the Constitution, you can't do it. I agree with you, Jefferson. Democrats favored France, small farmers, state banks, and free trade. France, small farmers, state banks, and free trade. Democrats wanted the common people to participate in government. They believed that liberty would only be safe if they participated. Which kind of makes sense because all these laws affect the common man more than anybody else. And if the common man was involved in government, then maybe they would... Uh, they would make laws that would protect our rights or wouldn't make laws that would violate them. This is supposed to be the common man. Their strongest support was in the South and shown here in the southern states, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Maryland. So in the election of 1796, you had the Democrats, Thomas Jefferson, and the Federalists, John Adams, going against each other. Candidates sought office for the first time as members of a party. To prepare both parties, Federalists and Democratic Republicans held their own caucuses to choose their candidates. Adams and Jefferson were really good friends. Uh, they had worked during the Revolution together. They had created the Constitution together. They wrote the Declaration of Independence together. But when they started operating the government, they were uh, political opposites, and um, they became rivals. Adams, during the election, got 71 electoral votes, and Jefferson got 68. So Adams won the election. Under the provisions of the Constitution at the time, the second place vote getter became the vice president. So you had a Federalist president and a Democratic vice president. All right, here is your political party's notebook. Uh, right here on page 268 and 269, you can find these charts. But I want you to make this chart on page uh, 58. This will be page 58 in your notebooks. And um, I want you to color them. I, want you, I colored the Federalist red to show the Federalist color. I called, colored the Democratic Republicans blue. The other chart is the cause and effect of political parties chart. And I want you to copy this down. And then your writing today is going to be cause, uh, look at the causes and effects of political parties chart above. Do you think the formation of political parties could have been avoided? Explain. What I mean by this is if you think political parties could not have been avoided, then use something up in here to back up your thing. You might say something like, uh, I don't think political parties could have been avoided because they had different philosophies of government. The Federalists believed in a strong central government and the Democratic Republicans believed in a weak central government. Uh, they also had conflicting interpretations of the Constitution. One believed in a strict interpretation and one believed in a loose. You might end it by saying something like, um, it would be hard to stop political parties because people who have things in common or believe the same way tend to band together. So, I mean, that's one interpretation. If you think that political parties could have been avoided, try to use some of these things in your solution. Well, that's it. Uh, complete your note taker and complete your notebook, and uh, have a great day. Talk to you later.